This is Romans in five. You're going to sin. But God's got some good news. You're going to be saved and you're going to learn to fight sin. But you'll still sin. And when you do, what's going to happen? God's got more good news to keep on saving you. That's the book of Romans. Romans looks like this. Chapter 1, verses 1 to 17 is the intro. Paul says he's an apostle. He's writing all of this because of Jesus. And Jesus is God. And God saves people by the good news, the gospel. And people who believe the gospel, they live by faith. Chapter 118 through 320 is this. Everyone sins. And no one likes God. No one. As a matter of fact, they hate God. That's what Paul says. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, this still applies to you. If you're a Jew, you're sinning one way. If you're a Gentile, you're sinning in another way. But no matter who you are, you're a sinner and nobody likes God. Nobody. Now, 321 through the end of the chapter is God doing his gospel. He does all the saving work. And the way he does it is by the death and resurrection of Jesus. And he gives it to you freely. Chapter 4, he says, look guys, this isn't new. This is how God has always operated. This is the way God saved Abraham. This is the way God saved David. God doing gospel in Christ. That's not a new idea. So if you are in Christ, God is doing gospel. And you are in the same line as Abraham and David. And you have their God. Doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile. You're included now. Chapter 5 is this. That this is justification which is what happens when God speaks the good news. He declares you to be right with him. And justification actually reaches all the way back to Adam. So what's happening is that not only are you included in Abraham and David, but this is actually going all the way back to Adam. This has been the plan all along. This was the plan from the beginning. Now chapter six says all these goodies, they're all given to you in baptism. If you want all this God doing gospel stuff to come to you, guess how it comes? Baptism. And now that you're baptized, you don't sin anymore, right? Now that you're baptized, no more being under sin's thumb. You've been set free. But in chapter 7, Paul says, I still sin. I still sin a lot. And I'm even more aware of my sin now than I ever was before. So the reality is that even while God is doing all this gospel to me, I keep on sinning. Part of me loves it, part of me hates it. I'm a conflicted mess. That's what Paul says in Romans 7. Chapter 8 says, yeah, but your sin never cancels out God's grace. Look at what God is doing. God does gospel, and you can't separate yourself from that love. Even if you are as rotten as chapter 7 says you are, and you are. You cannot separate yourself from what God is doing. So that's the outline of most of Romans chapters 1 to 8 and the most important parts. The question that he begins in chapters 9 to 11 is this. So well, wait a minute, if all this is true, why aren't the Jews jumping for joy and saved? If all this is wonderful, why aren't the Jews believing it? Has God failed them? Have they failed God? That's the question. The Jews rejecting Jesus. What are they doing? And what we're going to learn is that God is so faithful, he's even going to use the Gentiles to bring the Jews back, which is crazy. Chapter 12 is this. Now that you understand all this, let's live as church. We're going to worship together. We're going to serve each other. We're going to see each other as one body. Not as some people more important and others uh, less important. No, we're one body. Why? Because all of us are here because of the same reason. Because God does gospel. And we need it because we sin a lot, right? If you sin a lot and I sin a lot, we're equal. If the only good thing about me is that God loves me in Christ and the only good thing about you is that God loves you in Christ, we're equal. No one is more or less important here. Chapter 13. Is that part of living all this out is that you live it out in submission to authority. And here Paul says that authority is the secular government sometimes. The very government, Caesar, that's seeking to kill Christians, you have to go submit to him. Because the same God who does the gospel, 
has set up authority in this world. So if we trust him to save us, then we live under his authority even in this world. Chapters 14 and 15 is that the strong serve the weak. So if you think you've got this whole thing figured out and licked, it doesn't give you any cause to be looking down your nose at someone else. It gives you a motivation to make sure those who don't get all this learn that God does gospel. Chapter 16, a lot of friendly greetings to folks back and forth, because in Jesus, we're all family now. A final warning to watch out for those who try to sell you on another Jesus or some other good news. A final explosion of praise to God who dreamed this whole thing up ages ago, told us about it in the Old Testament, and now has fulfilled it all in Jesus. Folks, that's the book of Romans in five minutes-ish. You sin, God does gospel. Go read it, learn it, pass it on. 